Hey everyone, this is a video about the essay structure and you have the handout, but I thought it would be easy for some of you um, to just review the video and to have me explain it if you choose. Just keep in mind that the details that I've put here are not necessarily a one size fit all. You might have an essay that has a few differences in terms of how many pieces of evidence you have. Um, that's up to you. So you have some freedom in that. The first thing is, is that the introduction is listed obviously first, but if you'll think about the steps and the essay steps handout, I'm actually suggesting that you all write your body paragraphs first. And the reason why is because I feel that introductions are actually really difficult to write if that's the first thing that you do. So the basic outline is a really important framework. You're going to do that first. It's going to set you up for success to draft those body paragraphs. You're going to make them knowing that they're going to need some changes and some additions and subtractions, and that's okay. Then you're going to write the introduction. And the introduction is to just set the reader up for what they're going to learn in your body paragraphs. And I find it so much easier to do that second. So obviously I'm going to go over the intro first because it's first in the essay, but keep that in mind that your body paragraphs should be constructed first. First thing is in a historical essay, we want you to start off with about two to three sentences establishing the time and place as well as any key terms that would be important to the audience's understanding. You also want to avoid hooks that use something like a question, a quotation, or a dictionary definition. So you don't want to at, start off your paper with something like, have you ever wondered what it would be like to work in a factory for 16 hours a day at high temperatures and physical punishments in case you couldn't meet your standards? Question mark. Well, that's a really interesting question, it's a little bit elementary in a history writing essay. So we want you to mature and to grow stronger and to create a way to engage the reader that's not a question and not a definition that's straight out of a dictionary. I have some examples here for what I mean about key terms. This is obviously not what your essay is about right now, but these are two topics that we've studied. So I thought I could use them to help you make a connection. So if you're essay is about the Industrial Revolution, then you probably have to explain what industrialization is. If it's about the Renaissance, you probably have to explain that the word Renaissance means rebirth. You know what imperialism means. Think about that activity that we did, imperialism in four words, way back at the beginning of all this. Use your own voice to explain imperialism. What country are we in? What's the imperial nation? Think about giving the background knowledge that's necessary. Then you want to take about one to two sentences previewing the topic of each body paragraph and don't go into too much depth just yet. You shouldn't be citing any specific facts and figures in your intro. Um, you want to save those for the body paragraphs because that's where they belong. And if you cited them in the intro, then your paper is going to feel really, really repetitive and we don't want to have repetitive papers. Then you might need one to two sentences just sort of wrapping all of that up and moving into your controlling idea statement. Some students don't need that. Some introductions feel really awkward if they preview the body paragraphs and then go boom into the controlling idea. So you are going to have to make a personal decision on that. And I think it doesn't hurt to add just one more little transition. And after you write it, you'll be able to read it out loud and think to yourself, does it flow or does it just feel like this controlling idea was tagged on the end? Make sure it's the last sentence. It's only one sentence, by the way. Every now and then I get a student that makes two and it's italicized. And the italicized is a Barrington High School rule. It's not a me rule. We all do it. For the body paragraphs, Think about the topic sentence as being an almost one sentence way of summarizing the paragraph that is to come. And then everything in it is just little bing, bing, boom. Here are the examples of what I told you. So again, the first sentence should be a big picture. And here are some examples of what some students did below. I just cut and pasted these from some old essays. So 
if I look at the second one, for example, it says convinced of their racial supremacy, Belgian imperialists were excessively cruel to the Congolese in their pursuit of profitable resources. So I can predict in this paragraph, there's going to be examples of all the physical cruelty that the Congolese were subjected to in order to get rubber in the Congo. So again, the evidence is just, here's an example of cruelty. Here's another one. Here's another one. The first sentence just sets us up for that. So you want to identify what the example is. So maybe the first example is about how men were separated from women and that women were sometimes abused physically and sexually. Then you want to use some examples from your research. Again, use your own voice, paraphrase or integrate quotations as it feels natural. Use the citing evidence paper to help you understand which is which. If you don't know, you can also check out the video for that. And then you want to explain how that evidence connects back to this idea. So why were the men separated from the women? Well, they were separated from the women because they knew that they wanted to go, the men were going to want to go back to their families. So in order to get their profitable resources, they did these psychological things to the Congolese to achieve their economic end, which is we want as much rubber as possible. And then you transition to the next example. And I wrote here, it can be as simple as saying something like additionally comma, and then moving on to the next example. Be careful of repetition with these transition words. Uh, obviously you don't wanna use this every single time. Then do it again, then do it again. If you have more than three pieces of evidence, um, you can do that. Just be careful about how long your paper is. Then your concluding sentence obviously needs to sort of revisit what you started the paragraph with, but then you also need to then transition into the next body paragraph. So just sort of think about what the next body paragraph's topic sentence is and think about how you can segue those together. And if you look at the two sample papers that I provided, you can see an example of that at the end of the first body paragraph if you want to see what somebody else did. Your conclusion. Again, it should be probably about six to 10 sentences. If you look at the sample papers, they both do a good job of creating a conclusion that covers all of these elements. Number one, the first sentence should re-emphasize the controlling idea statement. I can't emphasize this enough. It's bold, it's red here. Do not cut and paste your controlling idea statement from the intro into the conclusion. It shouldn't be the same sentence and it doesn't need to be italicized. You have to rewrite it in a way that is aware of the fact that a human being just read your paper and gets what you have just pre uh, presented. Then you wanna review the topics of the body paragraphs. And this is also really important. You wanna be careful not to be redundant. If you look at the rubric, we don't want the conclusion to be redundant or predictable. You have to just sort of go through those elements again in a new way. Again, it's hard to explain because I'm not writing your paper, but if you look at other papers, you want to think about, okay, you're writing it in a way that the person knows what you know now. Whereas in the intro, they had no idea about your topic. Now they've read a couple pages and they have a bigger understanding. So you just want to write it with that in mind. Then you want to do about two to four sentences exploring the long-term effects of this moment in time on the region. And I say, yes, devote some research to this. So I think that the sample papers, you can see some interesting long-term effects with Algeria and Vietnam about how imperialism left those nations and, uh, you know, just take a look at some of the things that have occurred in the 20th and 21st century in those areas. And even when that area achieved its independence and if it has, and see if you can make a connection to imperialism. Uh, a lot of students leave this concept out and their conclusion isn't, isn't scored as highly as it could be with this addition. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with the, with the conclusion is that just remember that three sentences doesn't equal a conclusion. I find myself writing that a lot on papers 
because I feel like students re-emphasize the controlling idea and then they write one sentence or two about each of the body paragraphs and then they're done. I get that writing the paper and coming to an end is like a victory moment, but you also don't want to be just slapping something down on the paper and leaving right away because it's not really a conclusion. So make sure you take a moment to write the conclusion on its own one day or in one uh, little nugget of time and then come back to it and see if you're hitting these three bullet points that I have in here. So that's a little review of the structure. And again, if you have questions when we are devoting our time to this, please ask. And uh, you can always send me an email and ask a little clarification.